when I saw it, I, I thought, this is it. This is the house I'm going to live in forever. They're going to have to carry me out of here. After years of living in isolation on the Devon Moors, 36-year-old nurse Fiona Hutchings had just bought her dream home, Hawthorne Cottage. It seemed to be crying for help. It was very strange, very quiet. Built in 1914, Hawthorne Cottage sat among woods near the town of Tynmouth. Despite the financial burden, she'd made the move to be closer to her mother who had fallen ill. Fiona's son had recently left home, so she set about doing the place up on her own. From the start, she felt there was something strange about the atmosphere. After six months in the cottage, Fiona's mother died, leaving her completely alone. Then she met an elderly neighbor with disturbing news about the history of the cottage. She'd never passed my house because she'd been told by her mother not to, because she said there's all sorts of funny goings on down there. And I said, oh, you know, bawdy things. And she said, oh, no, she said naughty things, really naughty. The old woman told her the previous owner of Hawthorne Cottage had gone mad. Fiona dismissed it as village gossip. But two months later, she made a gruesome discovery. I was clearing the outside because it was completely overgrown. And I started digging up these cats. They'd all been um, mutilated and then wrapped and placed in the north, south, east, west positions, which I thought was rather strange. The burying of sacrificed animals is a practice often associated with black magic rituals. Fiona had started to feel uneasy in the cottage, but digging up the cats seemed to trigger something unpleasant. Fiona felt like Hawthorne Cottage was turning against her. I'd have unexplained electrical faults. I got through about f three or four TVs. I had two fires that started for no reason whatsoever. Washing machine that wouldn't turn off, microwave that blew up, uh, five or six kettles. Fiona's sanity was being pushed to the limit. It reached breaking point one October night in 1989. I'd gone to sleep quite happily. Actually, I'd had some hot chocolate, which was one of my favourites when I couldn't sleep. And I woke up and I couldn't get out of the bed. I thought, how did these children get in here and what are they doing in the middle of the night? And I thought, they're not real and something terrible's happened. For six or seven months, night after night, I didn't sleep at all. I didn't know at the time whether it was me that was imagining it and I was going crackers or if they really were there. Finally, she could take the nightly visitations no more and called a friend, Louise Barlow, who was a medium. Usually, clients had to wait for several weeks to see me, but um, a little voice said okay. in me, you need to see this lady now, like today. that there had been black magic rituals or rituals of some sort where you get a group of people together uh, and they do as they feel wonderful things but in fact it's awful whether it was that house i don't know but it was that land 
Louise felt that if Hawthorne Cottage was being haunted by events that happened on the land before it was built, then it was essential to fight back. She called in a qualified exorcist with the Liberal Catholic Church in nearby Exeter. The priest who still practices today has confirmed the events. Omnis spiritus simulde. He said the children had been sacrificed and he said it was a sort of ritual that I wouldn't wish to know about. Every time he put holy water down, it was like when you throw water on a bonfire. The ash and blackness and the smell was appalling. Little by little, the smoke disappeared. I thought, it's finished, it's all done, it's, it's clean, it's lovely. And I slept for weeks after that. The nighttime visitation stopped and life returned to normal. Fiona married a merchant Navy electrician called Viv. When I heard about the, um, the sacrifices and things that were supposed to be going on down there, it does make you wonder whether you should believe it at first, whether it's hairy fairy stuff. A few months after the wedding, Viv went away to sea, leaving Fiona alone in the cottage. Despite him being away, she was happier than she had been in years. The exorcism may have got rid of the children, but Fiona now believed there was something else in the cottage. It came back with such a vengeance, it was ten times worse. And when Viv returned from sea, he too found himself targeted, usually at night after he'd gone to bed. Oh, God! What on earth happened? I've got no idea how I got down there. Well, if I did fall down the stairs, I got, had no bruising or anything on me, and I just can't explain that one at all. I went back to Louise. She said, this has come back since you got married. Not only have you freed the children, you, you're also happy yourself, and this isn't on, they won't have it. After more than a year of being terrorised, the couple were at their wit's end. They had heard rumours of an elusive local man by the name of John Parker. Ever since I've been a child, I've been able to see what we would loosely call ghosts or dead people. I don't look at myself as a medium. I'm just an ordinary bloke on a building site, laying bricks, making a living. But I have been blessed, if you like, what I was picking up from Fiona was pure fear. And I knew that there was very serious trouble in that house, very serious trouble. At 7 p.m. on June the 6th, 1993, John Parker arrived at Hawthorne Cottage. In 30 years, he claims to have freed hundreds of trapped souls and has never charged a penny for his services. But this was to be his greatest battle. Terrifying unexplained phenomena at Hawthorne Cottage, Fiona and Viv Hutchings have called in ghost hunter John Parker. He is their last hope after previous oh, attempts at exorcism failed. We'll soon have this sorted out. You must be Viv. Pleasure to meet you. Now sit down, both of you, and I'll explain all. John believes that ghosts are souls stuck between this world and the next. He has to persuade them to move on. It is a battle of mind, of strength, of belief. In the pit. I have to be able to prove that I am stronger than what he is. I can hear footsteps running up the stairs. There's nobody there, of course. Not from this world. Right, you little buggers. Can't hide from me. I knew that they were sacrificed for the cult that they belong to. You don't belong, I'm telling you. The house shook, literally. Uh... I really don't think I've ever been so frightened, ever. 
I fought better men than you until you know. To actually hear it and experience it, it was nothing can warn you about that. What I remember, boy. I'm gonna beat you up. Crashing all, crashing all is where you're going. You know where you should be. You've been hanging around here far too long. Go on, go on. I'm telling you, on your way. <laughs> Cup of tea be nice, my dear. It had taken John six long hours, but the hauntings were over. He continues his work today in the southwest, but has experienced nothing like Hawthorne Cottage before or since. This is the worst I'd ever done. Fiona and Viv finally lost the cottage in 1995 to the banks. We now live from day to day. But one thing that I'm not anymore, I'm not frightened of things that I was frightened of, because now I've seen it, that's as bad as you can get. <laughs>